Hello ladies and gentlemen, yes it's June 16th and I know it's Father's Day but you know I just had to break my silence and just bring a couple of things up that are going on. Uh, I, I don't know if Glenn Beck's deal is actually going to disturb the government all that much. Uh, yeah, it indicates that there's some dangers there, you know, about the, the Republicans that are actually going to go up against, you know, I can't figure out how to say his name. He, he pronounces it Boehner, but I think it really is Boner. <laughs> What, whatever it is, uh, there's that rift going on. And as I've said all along, you know, it's good that there's opposition in the government, different, different people pulling different ways to some extent, as long as they stay within the confines of the Constitution. But in reality, it's, it's a lot more dangerous than that. This entire thing with the Snowden affair, for instance, uh, is very likely something that's been done between agencies that are in conflict with each other. Again, not that Snowden isn't the real deal, but just that there are some probably some other things going on there that are out of our line of sight. But that go along when you look at the entire picture with the fact that there are these factions in our government that are really warring against each other, and this is going to increase as time goes on until somebody finally takes the tyrant position, and that's getting pretty close, I'm afraid. But anyway, that's not really what I wanted to talk about so much today is this. Just two things real quick. Really crazy. <laughs> the first is, okay, the indefinite detention thing came up in the House last week. And they voted, I want to give you the figures here, 226 to 200 to keep the indefinite detention. That is a violation of the Constitution. The Constitution says you are to be secure in your personal effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, unreasonable being without a warrant. That's what that means by unreasonable, not just unreasonable in a, in a rhetorical sense or, or a, a dialectical sense. It means you have to get a judge to say, yes, there's probable cause to believe a crime has been committed, so therefore you can go seize this or whatever. Okay, so they voted on an unconstitutional issue and made criminals of themselves, the guys that, that, that actually voted to keep that indefinite detention thing, guys and girls. You know, it's like I said, they're, I'd like to think they're just uninformed, but we're talking about Congress. What am I saying? They are informed, right? Uninformed. They are uninformed. One of them, I won't mention any names. Remember, he talked about Guam. He was talking to that admiral and saying, well, I'm a little worried that Guam's getting a little heavy on this side of the island. I'm afraid it's going to tip over because he thinks that islands are floating on the water. And then you get the other one, uh, a lady, I won't mention her name, but she, she thought that North Dakota was on the Mexican border. <sighs> you know, who are these people? They all need to be run out of the office on a rail. The other thing I wanted to talk about, though, and this really shows you where things are, think about this. I've been telling you for a long time that the U.S., particularly the CIA, Western Intelligence Services, and Obama himself have been arming al-Qaeda. That's what the whole Benghazi thing is about, that they've now conveniently taken your eyes off of, because potentially that has the effect of really destroying Obama. But he, he's got some good people working for him. Good, but what I mean is, is they're great at, at manipulating the public opinion, even Congress. And so it's getting off those issues, as I kind of said in that last couple of videos, where they're throwing so much at you that they don't let you f focus on any one thing or, or even resolve it. Well, listen to this. Think about this for a minute. Okay, Al-Qaeda is our sworn enemy, right? And we're saying that, oh, we've got to go to war with Iran because, oh, Iran is supporting Al-Qaeda, right? Iraq was supporting Al-Qaeda. Actually, Iraq di didn't even have any Al-Qaeda in it until after, you know, we invaded. <laughs> and, and, the, and the whole place fell apart, which, by the way, still is not back to the even relative peace the way it was under Hus uh, Saddam Hussein. So we've made a total wreck of that, all by design, as I've always said. Same thing in Libya. Same thing, of course, they're trying to do in Syria. Same thing they did in Afghanistan. All right, what's my point? My point is this. We've been telling you that they've, they've been arming Al-Qaeda. 
to go into these different countries, that they are the tool of the United States government, intelligence services, and obviously the president. And I'm just going to say it. The POTUS is a traitor. Okay, I'll just say it. Well, further proof. <laughs> okay, what is Iran doing? Iran, who's supposed to be a supporter of al-Qaeda, is going to get troops ready to go assist Assad in Assyria, in Syria, against the Syrian rebels who they've said are al-Qaeda. <laughs> so the U.S. is supporting al-Qaeda now, and Iran is going to fight against it, against al-Qaeda. Can things get any more obvious about what's going on here? Do the American people understand this? I don't see how they can't. This is serious, of course, because for one thing, as I've always, as I've said many times, terrorism is a tactic. You can't have a war on a tactic. That's the reason why the Constitution set up the way it is, so that Congress has to approve any time the president wants to invade a foreign country or take action, military action against a foreign country. <sighs> because there has to be a balance to this madness that we see. And what does Congress do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, you have McCain going over there patting Al-Qaeda on the back, pretending like he doesn't know that's who they are. So here we go with this absolute madness. Iran and Syria are fighting Al-Qaeda, which is being supported monetarily, training-wise, military-wise, and now even arms-wise by the United States government. Go figure. Happy Father's Day. Yeah, oh, that's right. We're not supposed to use that word anymore. That's another thing, right? Not supposed to use father, not supposed to use mother, because that's hate speech. That makes people that, that, that don't have those, those family type of situations feel bad. Yeah, okay. 